Well, thank you, Mr. Speaker, and I appreciate the opportunity today uh, to speak to the motion. And I wanted to start first uh, with with a review of uh, of some numbers, of some facts, uh, because they are. I think it's very important to be to be to feel the force of these facts. But before I do that, before I talk about numbers, I want to acknowledge. Uh, that these numbers are made up of individual lives. And I want to repeat something that I heard uh, from my colleague from St. Paul's who uh, presented the motion, which is, uh, I think, a very important thing to say. And she said something like this, that, that in this world, each victim may be just one woman, but to the family and loved ones of each of these victims, each woman means the world. And I just want to say that we must remember the value of every person, uh, each person who lives on the margins uh, of our society. And it's with this in mind that I, that I uh, want to discuss some of the numbers, to bring up some of the numbers. The uh, Native Women's Association of Canada uh, estimates that the, uh, the number of uh, female homicides in Canada, is 10% uh, of them uh, is of, of Native women, whereas they represent only 3% of the female population of Canada. And over 600 cases of missing or murdered Aboriginal women and girls have been uh, documented uh, by, by NWAC. And if you apply that rate to the general population, it would result in something like 20,000 uh, murdered or missing women. And you have to wonder what would be the outcry if we had such a statistic in the general population. If people with means the people with the resources and the education and the time to come to a place like this, to talk to policymakers, to influence government, uh, if, if this rate uh, occurred in the general population, whether something would have been done uh, already. And that is, that is one of the reasons why we're here uh, today. The other thing that strikes me is that most of the cases involve young women, young women and girls. And uh, I, I've noted here that uh, 17% uh, of the cases involve um, women and girls 18 years of age or, or younger. So it does involve uh, younger women. And, and the other reason why we're here is that a lot of these cases are unresolved. Uh, nationally, the average number uh, of cases that are cleared, uh, average number of homicide cases that are, are cleared is something like 84%, whereas only half of uh, cases involving Aboriginal women and girls uh, are solved. Now, Mr. Speaker, I'm really happy to stand here today not only to speak to the motion but to respond to what the government uh, members have said today. Uh, and they support this motion. And I want to take the time uh, to thank them for their support of this motion. I am very glad that this Liberal motion has won the support of Conservative members of Parliament. I think it's a very sensible thing to do and I'm, I'm very appreciative uh, of the all-party support and therefore uh, very hopeful uh, that good work will come out of the special committee uh, that will be set up after the, the vote takes place in a couple of weeks. We still believe that a public inquiry is necessary, but we look forward to the committee from this House of Commons traveling across the country uh, to hear testimony from witnesses uh, and to, to, to really hear <coughs> them tell us uh, what the government needs to do. We, we should also summarize some of the deficiencies uh, that, that have been pointed out. And we've had a report this week uh, from Human Rights Watch, uh, where they've heard testimony from indigenous women and, and girls about uh, deficiencies in our policing system, which uh, <laughs> prevent, I'm sure, the overwhelming number of good men and women who work uh, in, our, in the RCMP and other police forces to protect us that prevent them from uh, adequately protecting Aboriginal women and, and girls. <coughs> um, we also know that the United Nations uh, human rights bodies have, have criticized Canada for an inadequate government response and we have uh, an announcement in December of 2011 uh, from the United Nations uh, Committee on the Elimination of Discrimination Against Women uh, that it was going to open an inquiry to what was happening in Canada. And in 2008, uh, that committee called on the Canadian government to examine the reasons for the failure of adequate uh, protection uh, for, for, for Aboriginal, Aboriginal women, which has resulted in this unacceptable number uh, of cases of missing and, and murdered Aboriginal women, women and girls. 
Now, the, we've heard today about some of the measures that the government uh, has taken. For example, the RCMP's uh, National Center for Missing Persons and Unidentified Remains, uh, for which a national website uh, was launched at the end of, of January. And, and that is a good thing, but it should be said that that, that database, that tool, uh, doesn't focus on the problem uh, at issue today, which is uh, missing and murdered Aboriginal uh, women and girls. And uh, the honorable, my honorable colleague from Portage, uh, Lisker, talked about all sorts of uh, initiatives to improve uh, the investigation, essentially all the things that you can do after the crime has been committed. But I think we have to think more about problems about the system. Maybe it's problems about uh, uh, the policing system that prevent uh, the good women, men and women who work in our police forces from, from doing the best that they can. Maybe it's, uh, maybe it's things like poverty or racism or sexism. And if you, if you realize that poverty or race, racism or sexism have contributed to the murder or the abduction or the disappearance of an Aboriginal uh, woman or girl, do you, do you go to the police and say, you know, I know what the real cause of that bad cases, it's poverty. No, that's not something for the police to take care of. That's something that must be addressed at the level of, of policymakers, legislators, at the level of government. And that's another reason why we're here today to establish this, uh, this special committee. So we need to study root causes in addition to all of the things that we could do after a crime is committed. We've got to study root causes and I'm very glad uh, that the first government uh, uh, member to, to rise today to speak to this motion did acknowledge the importance of working uh, on, on prevention. So we have to, have to ask the question, is there something in our system of policing uh, that results in inadequate protection for Aboriginal women and girls? Uh, <clears throat> we have to ask what is the role of poverty or of racism or of se uh, sexism or of a lack of awareness in, in the general population? And we also need to know, and, and this is why the, 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 the uh, motion today uh, mentions travel, travel across the country to, uh, to consult with people across the country. We must do our work in conjunction with, with Aboriginal communities. Uh, we, we need leadership from not only the federal government, but from communities across the country, working together from indigenous communities to develop and implement a, a national action plan on violence against uh, indigenous uh, women that, that really address the structural uh, roots and the, co the causes of violence and, uh, and the accountability mechanisms uh, for ensuring that whatever plan we put into place really gets uh, carried out and the results measured. Uh, Mr. Speaker, we have to uh, explain why uh, there has been um, so far, I mean, another reason for, for, for for acting now is that there, there has been uh, incomplete uh, efforts. Uh, uh, for example, the, the current government funds uh, the national, uh, sorry, the Native Women's Association, but says that they can't use the money for Sisters in Spirit. And that, that project, Sisters in Spirit, was really focused on violence against Aboriginal women and, and girls. We have committee work that was begun in this place in 2010, which was interrupted by the election of, of 2011. So I'm very glad that uh, we're on the path today, Mr. Speaker. Uh, we're on the path because uh, we have, the Liberal Party has won the support of the government for this motion to set, set up a special committee and so we're happy that we've been able to take at least this uh, beginning step to address the uh, injustices and the inequities suffered by those living at the margins uh, of our society. And we've, we're happy that we're going to be able to, to study and hear testimony about uh, the root causes of unacceptably high rates of violence against Aboriginal women and girls. And we look forward to this special committee traveling across our country to hear testimony. Thank you, Mr. Speaker.